Okay, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the very first Clarksburg Town Hall and listening session. This event was host, is hosted and was, was hosted and organized by the Clarksburg Cluster PTAs and um, wonderfully led by Minnie Varughese, Beth Vachi Wolf, Wolf, and myself, Nadia Shahmalina. Um, right now, your host for today will be Minnie Varughese and, and myself. So again, welcome. Um, the agenda for tonight um, will be an introduction background of the town hall, introduction of candidates, the Clarksburg voices, um, the actually live testimonies, and then a few action items. And if we have enough time, we'll do a question and answering session where we give a little time of the candidates who are here today to speak and engage with the, um, with the audience here. So introduction background of the town hall, why we wanted to start this is, since living here, and I've lived here since 2018, when I tell them I'm in Clarksburg, people often ask, well, where is Clarksburg? So Clarksburg, this is Montgomery County, this is Clarksburg, we're like right at the top there. And then the next question asked is, well, what do you have there? What do you do? What is there to do at Clarksburg? So hopefully um, with, this, with this event, we are able to showcase and highlight our community and the concerns that we have here and also the passions and the um and i'm entering this and the passions that we have for our neighbors our environment our, our communities and our families Minnie, i'm going to turn this to Minnie so she can introduce the candidates yes so shelly skolnick is there a i'm sorry start over the candidates from Montgomery County Executive, starting off with Shelly Skolnick. I don't believe I um, have her on this list quite yet. Reardon Sullivan, David T. Blair, County Executive Mark Ehrlich, Peter James, Council Member Hans Reamer, and David Batley. We have invited all, everyone on this list to join us. And then to the next section, please. County Council District Number Two, that's our district. Dan Kuda, Marilyn Balcombe, Lorna Phillips Ford, and William Roberts. We have some excellent candidates running for these positions. And this is the opportunity for them to hear what we care about. And I um, believe May 11th is going to be where they answer our questions. Okay, next one is the Board of Education District 1, Alexandra Fami, Jay Guan, Grace Rivera Owen, and Esther L. Wells. Welcome to all our candidates. We're hoping that the issues that, oh, we have more, sorry. <laughs> In, uh, Board of Education at large, Mike Erickson, Michael Fryer, Jay Dominic, Gian Dominico, and Carla Silvestri. Welcome everyone. Okay, Nadia, back to you. Thank you. We're just gonna jump right into it because we have a lot of testimonies we have to go over. So it, it, we've, we've divided the testimonies into four um, topics of concern. One is traffic, education, safety, and community resources. The first testimony, these are all written testimonies. We do have, um, we do have community members who want to give live testimonies, so we are gonna go over the written testimonies first. So the first one is from Ms. Farah Khan. Her concern is the train line, so is related to traffic and is to the, about the train line to Clarksburg. Extension of red line to near Clarksburg will help commuters reduce congestion on 270 and reduce carbon footprint. Minnie, did you wanna read the next one? Sorry, going back and forth. Yes. <laughs> the next one is from Ting Mei Chow. I would like to ask the candidates the following questions. Education opportunities. With Clarksburg growing rapidly and more residents who are starting families here, how can we make sure various programs and resources are available for us? Like community facilities. People in Clarksburg have heard about the potential great libraries, indoor swimming pools, community centers, et cetera, for almost 20 years. 20 years of promise, but nothing's happened. We pay taxes and we wait patiently, but nothing's happening. When will the capital budget truly include the up county? Recently, 
Public safety has been a concern along for the schools, the neighborhoods, and our public areas. What is the government doing to ensure things are not getting worse? We appreciate the police and want to see their presence in the community. Can you promise to give us safety? Thank you. This one is from Anonymous and it's related to education. I am concerned that giving all students a 50% grade, even if no work has been completed, is a risky precedent. Students need to put in less effort in a class to get a passing grade, and as a result, the potential and need to learn the class material is lessened. This dumbs down the material and expectations of the class for all. I would not want to be operated on by a doctor who only had to be knowledgeable enough to get an A starting from a 50% grade versus a doctor who had earned all the percentage points to obtain an A grade. Is the intent of the BOE to promote mediocrity? to impart less knowledge to our students as they enter the real world, to expect to be catered to in this way in the real world, to use a term from the sport of golf, are we sending a message that our teachers can't teach the students unless they are given this handicap? Are we reaching our students that unless they start, are we teaching our students that unless they start from a middle ground, they will not be able to do well? Uh, this ultimately will make students who get a good grade wonder if they could have gotten this grade without the boost, and will they be able to succeed in their future goals without a boost? Please consider this in discussing the rationale for this policy. There's a concern of our community resources from Makesh Ramakrishna. We need for our community centers and mental health, well being, and support. We would like to have a community center, a library, well connected new roads, as our community is growing bigger and bigger every year. Thank you. This concern comes from the residents of Windsong Lane, Parkside community. The concern is traffic and safety. So, from Clarksburg Road by Snowden Parkway, the speed limit should be reduced. It's a small cul de sac of only 31 homes. The county limit is 25 miles per hour, but the community is requesting it to be decreased to 15 miles per hour. There is concern for the children of the area. Traffic has increased significantly. There's also a need for a crosswalk going across Snowden to the community. They stated that it was going to be created from the Snowden Parkway connector, but it is still not complete. We want it to be connected from Clarksburg Road to Snowden Parkway. The crosswalks are not connected. They said there will be a traffic light there, but nothing yet. Oh, this is my testimony, okay, for the boundary studies and support for the buildings. What are your ideas to alleviate the lack of mental health professionals in MCPS to support both the teachers and the students, not just the students themselves, but the teachers needed as well? Everyone agrees we need more mental health support, but MCPS's high bar for qualified professionals prevents hiring of this sparse resource. Private mental health providers have volunteered their services, but MCPS has declined their offers. The state could also authorize Medicaid payments to the school to support private providers for their services. Thank you. Sorry, this is mine. <laughs> mine is related to traffic, community resources, and education. There is a need for a crosswalk on Blue Sky Drive to support students walking to and from Wilson Wimps um, throughout the day as walkers now have to enter through the back entrance. I have seen, I have seen students and cars face off or play who will go first game on that road as no one knows who has the right of way. Other cars then enter into the mix. Those are our exiting Wilson whims and I can see the consternation on the student's face. Thankfully, the drivers here have been very careful, but we, must we wait until we have a, a driver who is negligent and causes an accident which results in an injury or worse to get a crosswalk and a crossing guard. There needs to be a crosswalk and a crossing guard position on that intersection as many families use it to cross to go to school. There's also a need for a crosswalk on Snowden Farm by Wilson Wimps. There is a ramp on both sides of the road, but there's no crosswalk in between. In essence, pedestrians must cross at their own risk. Community resources. I have been in Clarksburg since 2018 and I am startled at the lack of community resources here. 
such as a live, not having a library in the community centers, which others, are my fellow neighbors, have wonderfully expressed. I asked my sophomore, who is a student at Clarksburg High School and his peers, what their concerns are, and they in unison stated there is a need for a library, a rec center. They also brought up a need for more businesses, making Clarksburg a bit more business friendly, especially more restaurants. They actually said Boba Place <laughs> nearby and walking distance. Education. Clarksburg High School, as, as long as as well as his other high, as well as Clarksburg Elementary, is over capacity. The expansion for it was in the books, but then it was shelved. When I researched the books, I did not see Whitman's expansion as part of the discussion in the county, but they just received an expansion of over twenty-five million dollars. Clarksburg is ranked fifty in Maryland based on U.S. News, and Whitman is ranked first. Clarksburg has a 38% farms rate, but it only just got a parent community coordinator this year after the PTSA advocated for it. How can we support schools like Clarksburg High School so it can provide enough resources for its students and show significant progress to achieve the same successes as schools like Whitman? Mental health support, what can the BOE, Board of Education and County do to, do to support mental health and anxiety concerns of students at MCPS apart from the Zendens? How will the Zendens work if there are not enough mental health specialists in schools? The ideal ratio is 250 students to one counselor. I understand this is a nationwide problem, but what can we do here at Montgomery County to break that trend and perhaps serve as a model for the state and nation? I believe all of these concerns are interconnected and it highlights how much advocacy and support is needed for our community. I understand our community is but one in this amazing county, but we are, we are also one of the fastest growing community here at a rate of 110%. We hope this can be a start to getting our voices heard and positive changes occurring for our community. Thank you. Okay, this is from our third coordinator, Betsy Ochi Wolf. And since I can't read that, I'm going to open my version. Good afternoon. My name is Beth Wolf. I am the Clarksburg Elementary PTA president and have been a resident of Clarksburg, Maryland since 2016. Clarksburg was supposed to be a dream community with a master plan to lure businesses, builders, and buyers. But instead, Clarksburg has become a sprawl of thousands of brick and mortar houses instead of homes because they lack the infrastructure that is necessary for our people to flourish. We lack sidewalks, as we just discussed, wide enough roads to handle even local traffic, community and placemaking spaces, and schools to fit the number of children that live in our community. We were promised a library, a firehouse, a town center, local and regional transit roads, and another elementary school, among other things. Despite paying an impact tax for the future development that was needed, all we've seen is more and more houses per house permits being approved without the proper infrastructure to support the growth. I understand the housing shortage that currently exists in Montgomery County, but the council needs to take personal responsibility for the balanced development that has happened in Clarksburg. As an outsider, Clarksburg might look shiny and new right now, but if the development of spaces that cultivate community, culture, identity, shared experience, education, and belonging continue to be neglected, the soil beneath us will erode and with it, our town. Take for example, Clarksburg Elementary School. In 2008, the County Council approved the building of 1,886 new houses and an apartment complex in Cavern Branch, but didn't approve building the elementary school, building the elementary school, Clarksburg number nine. As a result, Clarksburg Elementary enrollment, which was built for 311 students, swelled to 120% utilization. Then when 180 additional houses as part of Dowden Station and Tapestry was approved, but not the building of Clarksburg number nine, the school's enrollment again swelled to 250% utilization. That's 775 children that are attending a school that is built for 311 during a pandemic. The children that attend the classes in the 15 portables have a porta potty to go to the bathroom. Parents are not supposed to volunteer at the school through the lack because of a lack of parking and space. But some parents have never ever been to their child's school building. How is that supposed to create community identity? And yet the county council approved the building of another 974 houses in the Clarksburg Elementary School boundary without making sure 
would there be adequate schooling opportunities for the children that would live there? Yes, Clarksburg number nine has now been approved, but it will not be ready until fall of 2023, which means Clarksburg Elementary is projected to start the 2022 school year, that's this school year, with 900 children enrolled in a school built for 311. The Clarksburg Elementary PTA has been working with MCPS to figure out a solution for this overcrowding since September. Last month, MCPS finally approved a liberal COSA process and communal bus stops for 124 students who volunteered to go to Gibbs Elementary. This doesn't resolve all the overcrowding. In fact, it keeps us in the same position we were in this year, that's all. But this only comes after months of meetings with the Board of Education, County Council members, state delegates, testifying at the BOE and City Council CIP meetings and Montgomery County zoning meetings. Every time, no matter which group I am testifying or talking to, the responsibility for the lack of infrastructure in Clarksburg is passed to a different organization. The Board of Education says that the County Council can't, didn't fund it. County Council says that the Board of Education isn't prioritizing it and so on and so forth. I would like to know if you, as a potential representative of Clarksburg and our, res our residents, are you ready to stop passing the blame for the lack of infrastructure that exists in Clarksburg? If so, how will you take responsibility for the lack of infrastructure and what infrastructure will you prioritize bringing to Clarksburg to turn this community from brick and mortar houses into actual homes? And that's it. Thank you. Okay, so now I am going to stop my screen share because now I'm going to open the floor for the live testimony. We did have one, um, I wonder if she's here, who wanted to, who submitted a request for live testimonies. She is not in yet. Um, so I'm gonna open it up to the floor. I'm gonna see if there's any more chat here. And yes, I will get those testimonies in print. I will share the um, my file up into a PDF so you all can have it as well. But I'm going to now open the floor here for anyone who would like to share their testimonies or concerns live. And um, so, yeah, so many of you could um, moderate this and or watch the chat for me as well. Does anyone have any testimonies they would like to share to the candidates or about Clarksburg? Any concerns that you have that you would like to bring up? While we wait, I'd like to say my additional piece. As one of our candidates pointed out to us, the Board of Education, we can vote for every single candidate in every single um, section for the Board of Education, which is nuts. Basically, the entire county votes for our representative and we vote for their representative. I would like to know from the um, elect, uh, the candidates, how do they propose to change this? This doesn't quite make sense. And I don't understand why it's still in the books like this. Uh, this is Jay, I can actually provide some insight onto this. Um, you'll be happy to know that actually there was a state bill that was proposed by the Montgomery County delegation to change how Board, uh, Board of Education uh, members are elected. And the changes is basically to align the, the system uh, with county council systems. So if you live in a district, then you have to be in the district to run and only the voters in that district vote for that district representative. It was, it was it passed in Montgomery County a delegation, but uh, last time I checked, it seems like it got stuck in the committee. So unfortunately, we will have to try again next year. But the there is a growing momentum that um, more and more people realize that how we are doing Board of Education um, election isn't really working. And, is unfair for unfair for for the constituents and is extremely unfair for the candidate uh, candidate and, and incumbent as well, because one, uh, for a lot of incumbent and candidates, there is no good way of doing constituent service when you are doing part time job and you're trying to to serve a million people. Now for and and for the constituents and the problem you already mentioned it there's. It is seemingly, it seems really nice that you have, you basically every single representative, you can vote for every single representative and they technically represent you, but they don't 
have the time to get to know an issue like your neighbor would. But um, yeah, sorry, I can't be the bearer of good news. The only thing I can say is there is a state, there is a state bill this year. It got passed in Montgomery County delegation, but it got stuck in the committee. So we have to try again. Thank you, sir. I think on that note there, we will, because um, Minnie and I were talking, we will allow the candidates to speak briefly um, and address the community at this town hall meeting if we have enough time. And so I'm gonna start with the county executives candidates who are here. I believe there is Peter James and I believe it is uh, Shelton Skolnick. So I'm gonna do an alphabetical order from what I'm seeing. So Peter James, if you would like to speak a, a little bit about um, you know, this meeting and just a, give a brief overview and, and so forth. You, are, you have the floor now, sir. Wait, wait, you're yeah. supposed to give a time limit. Oh, and it, please limit it to say what, three, three minutes. Okay, well, it was, it was enjoyable to, to be a listen, on the listening end for a while. Um, I, I wanna make it very clear that I'm the only candidate that's in, from the up county. And um, I'm the only candidate that supported and voted for question D, which was to get rid of the at-large uh, candidates. I'm a technology guy. I think we, uh, my, my first focus is fixing the transportation. And then I have some background in the video game business as well. And I wanna build like a Sim City game so that every citizen can get on and have a very realistic simulation. They're called digital twins. Boston's got one of them now. But you're, all these questions can be simulated and I plan to run software algorithms and uh, artificial intelligence to look for things like equity, to see on a per capita basis, how many libraries are there? Um, and really um, before anything gets developed to have a simulation of that development and a simulation generated of what the traffic's gonna be like, parking, uh, water and sewer, all uh, enrollment. Uh, so I wanna basically create a truly open government to address all and let the community address um, these issues. I, I also um, uh, will be, uh, rather than doing ro roads or uh, transit, I have a better solution. It's called personal rapid transit. And everybody needs to go to my website at uh, uh, pjames.us. And they, the first one was put um, out in West Virginia in Morgantown. And it's been running for 47 years and it hasn't had a single crash. And it moves about 15,000 people um, a day. And now they're starting to build them out in Northern California. Um, do I have a timer <laughs> anywhere? Uh, I think you just have one more minute, sir. Oh, okay, good. I I'm used to the two minute window. So um, <laughs> yeah, so, so um, I, I moved to Montgomery County when I was four. Um, graduated Springbrook High School, then went out to uh, California in Silicon Valley. And um, uh, I consulted to high-tech semiconductors, um, guys like Nolan Bushnell started Atari um, and have worked for, me and my brother started a company who had over 200 clients and some of them were uh, 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 Santa Clara County, uh, San Mateo County, City of Sunnyvale, um, uh, Fortune 500, mostly in, in the high tech, but a lot of other uh, uh, securities firms and a, a wide range of things. And the county is made up of um, dozens of different really operations or could be looked at as separate businesses. And I think I have the chops to go in there and, and knock 10, 20% off of that 3.2 billion that we spend. Um, but particularly, um, Watch the video on my website about the uh, bus rapid transit and how um, uh, there's no ridership. Um, they're also uh, killers. So I wanna fix transportation and being able to get the things like restaurants. If you can get down to Silver Spring in 30 minutes from Clarksburg, um, th that, that opens up your amenities. But giving you guys control with this um, digital twin, 
that every citizen can go in and make suggestions and people can see what it is. And then the thing would calculate what the cost of all these things and make sure that there's equitable spending of the budget throughout the county. Um, or at least show the public what the equity it is. Um, thank you very much. Thank you kindly, sir. And I will say, I grew up in Morgantown. <laughs> I rode the PRT yeah. all the time. Yeah. I thought it was like a mini roller coaster, but slower. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. We're, we're looking at smaller, uh, smaller ones, and they're like twenty person. So these would be smaller and faster, and <laughs> yeah, because it's slow. Newer. <laughs> but it's great. It is great transportation because more in West Virginia, the campus is so uh, it's, it's dispersed throughout Morgantown. So it takes, mm -hmm. you know, the students from one campus to the other. And it was really, really nice. So I can attest mm -hmm. that it's really, really cool and nice. Yeah. So I want to put one on 355 rather than the bus rapid transit. It's going to be a quarter of the cost of the bus rapid transit. So just imagine that. Sorry, oh. I, I, I'm using more time than I should. I, I got to start listening more. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you down there, Mr. James. And uh, now I'm going to ask uh, Shelton Skolnick to speak. Again, you have three minutes. Okay, well, thank you for holding the town hall. It's very nice. And uh, we're getting invitations as candidates. We're getting lots of invitations. And I appreciate your format of presenting concerns first, which is very nice. Um, it was very interesting. The things that you want, obviously, are going to cost money. And my concern is how the county is spending its money. Can we save significant money so we can buy, not buy, so we could construct the library, the sidewalks, the additional schools. And if you look at how the county is spending, for example, uh, Peter mentioned about the uh, BRT, Bus Rapid Transit. That is spending, I think they were to spend now something like $60 million on um, another route. Uh, what I had offered is a, BLT, a bus lane toll, where the left lane of a three lane road becomes a variable toll road during rush hours. It would be at no expense to the taxpayer since the uh, tolls would pay for it. So there alone is like a $60 million savings, where then you can use that money for your library and your schools. Another area where we can have significant savings is my proposal to have free tuition at Montgomery College for students who do volunteer work in the county government or the schools. For example, like a volunteer firefighter or a volunteer teacher aide. Uh, these students would perform work in our schools, in our county government agencies at a significant uh, reduction in the cost. So the, the, I expect tens of millions of dollars to be saved by these students working in our schools and in our county government, as well as getting mentors and role models. So there's areas where we can save significant sums of money and then devote it to needs like you've expressed regarding your library, your rec center, your community center. Um, I truly believe that that's a way to go forward. And if you, if you look at Metro as another area of uh, concern, I noticed you wanted the red line I guess from Shady Grove to be extended closer to Parksburg, which makes good sense and hopefully eventually all the way up to, to Frederick um, and other lines extended further. Um, I'm very concerned about Metro. I think they're grossly mismanaged. Uh, just recently in the last year or so, you have the 7,000 series taken out of the Metro rail. What I propose, and I think is desperately needed, is to reform Metro to limit it to solely Metro rail, just the rail system, and have the buses transferred to the counties in DC, have the garages transferred to the counties in DC, the parking lots transferred to the counties in DC, and Metro access transferred to the counties in DC. I believe by limiting Metro to Metro rail, hopefully they'll improve it and be able to extend and expand it, but the, the management just seems to me have multiple problems. I'd like to see the county taking over the roles that I just mentioned. Also, if we take over the land near the metro stations, I proposed four years ago when I ran for county council at large, and I'm proposing again, what I call bus rider buildings at the metro stations. A bus rider building is basically like a Dunkin' Donuts or a Starbucks, 
but expand it to seat maybe 100 or 200 bus riders while they're waiting for their bus. So rather than standing outside in the cold, the rain, the snow, or the heat, we'd have buildings by each metro rail station for comfort and safety for the bus riders. I think this would be quite an improvement for the existing bus riders and encourage many more people to use buses to and from metro stations. It just seems to me that they just ignore, you know, Metro has ignored the basic needs for their riders. They have a monopoly and they seem to be a monopolist, obviously, where they don't have to be concerned with the consumer. So those are some of the suggestions that I've been proposing four years ago and today. And I hope we can achieve those. I really believe we can do a much better job, save considerable money, and provide the type of facilities that you've demonstrated are needed in Clarksburg. So I hope that is accomplished. And again, I thank you for having this town hall and look forward uh, to meeting you. I think you said something on May 11th. So look forward to May 11th also. Thank you. Thank you, Kylie. Thank you. And I believe that is um, the other um, executive candidates, county, county executive candidates are not able to make it tonight. So we will send them the recordings. Um, the county executive forum is to be determined. So we will definitely let you and Mr. James know whenever we will hold that. The May 11th and June 1st will be for the other respective candidates that we have here today. But I'm going to go now to county council district two candidates. I'm going to start off in alphabetical order. Um, we will start with Marilyn Balcom. Let me um, highlight you here. Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. I apologies for my backdrop. I, I at an event that I had uh, for my day job that I had to duck out of, uh, but very, very happy to be here. Um, so Marilyn Balcom, I um, live in Germantown. I've been here for 27 years. Uh, my daughter was born and raised here product of Montgomery County Public Schools. And when I listened to your testimony, uh, it was very similar to, to Germantown in terms of, of overcrowding of schools. Uh, my Every school that my daughter went to, elementary, middle, and high school, all had portables. And the growth in Germantown, uh, my house, uh, my daughter went to two elementary schools. And the, my home has already been redistricted to a third elementary school. So, so we've seen those growing pains uh, here in Germantown. Um, I am the president and CEO of the Gaithersburg Germantown Chamber of Commerce. I've been there for uh, 16 years. I work very closely with small businesses, uh, particularly through the pandemic and trying to keep doors open and keep making sure working families uh, kept their jobs. Uh, and so we, we feel optimistic uh, the unemployment rate has, is going down, and uh, we've seen a lot of businesses actually open. So we're, we're um, optimistic, cautiously optimistic, I might add. Uh, my background, I'm an accountant. Uh, uh, my first uh, profession was an accountant. I'm also an organizational psychologist. So I understand budgets. I understand organizations um, and have been very active in the community, just like all of you on the call. Um, I've been through uh, the uh, PTA, uh, very active in the PTA. I was a cross country mom um, and active in the community. Um, I was on the Citizens Advisory Board, uh, uh, Up County Citizens Advisory Board. Um, and I opened Black Rock Center for the Arts. I was the executive director throughout construction um, and uh, opening. And um, know many of you on the call um, and uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, I just wanted to address, and I think we'll go into this further um, uh, in the next time we meet, but uh, some of the issues that were raised, um, the infrastructure issues. Uh, absolutely, um, Clarksburg has gotten the short end of the stick here in terms of so many houses being built with not enough infrastructure. Um, the roads, uh, I mean, that's been an issue for a very long time. Uh, the master plan roads need to be built. Uh, there has been no uh, leadership in terms of, of getting those roads be built. Um, I think that that certainly needs to happen. Um, and then schools, um, we need to work much closer with, uh, um, with our state delegation to make sure that we get 
uh, CIP funding for for schools, um, and then um, all the other amenities, everything that everything that the community needs. I'm running out of time, uh, but I I am with you. I understand uh, your concerns, and I look forward to talking with you further. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Marilyn. Um, I am now going to ask Dan Cuda, here with me one moment. Dan Cuda, if you could be so kind. I'm going to spotlight you here. Thank you so very much. You now have the floor. Hello, Clarksburg. I appreciate very much this opportunity to hear uh, what your concerns are. Uh, uh, I'm married into a Montgomery County family uh, out of a a uh, career in the Air Force. I live down in North Potomac. I've lived there for 30 years. All my children are uh, graduates of Montgomery County Schools. And uh, I will tell you, when I heard about your Clarksburg library problems, I remember waiting almost 10 or 15 years for the uh, Quince Orchard Library to be built. So I know what it's like to have that frustration. Uh, and I, I've been a commuter uh, working in Virginia, so I know what uh, the traffic and infrastructure problems uh, that that you're all speaking about. It seems to me like fundamentally what we have is a uh, an unbalanced uh, growth here. We have a, a growth in housing without the requisite education and roads and uh, crossing guards and, and all of the things that build a quality of life. And uh, like we've talked about, there's been this uh, inequity in county government that uh, left out Clarksburg and left out the western part of the county. And I'm glad to say that uh, the new developments that have added another uh, uh, district out here into our area, Clarksburg, uh, Germantown, North Potomac, Coolsville, that whole area. Uh, I look forward to uh, being your representative, to be your voice basically uh, in county government because we haven't had that before. We've been, like you mentioned with the Board of Education, We've had too much of the at-large mentality and not enough people that can be held accountable for uh, results at the local level. Uh, I've, uh, I uh, teach uh, public administration at George Mason University. I've been a management analyst at uh, the Pentagon through about half of my military career. And uh, I was a pilot the other half. And I can tell you that uh, when we talk about small business in Montgomery County, uh, we're kind of like an in-flight uh, aircraft with a, uh, an engine problem. Uh, we're losing altitude and the small business people I've talked to uh, feel like they were forgotten by county government through the pandemic. And, uh, and primarily our, uh, our economic engine that is ultimately the fundamental uh, answer to most of our problems. They don't directly uh, solve our problems, but uh, the economic problem we've got in Montgomery County, we need to restore our growth and restore our lo local growth. All of our problems get better uh, with small uh, with building uh, local jobs, and uh, that's really all I have to say. And I look forward to uh, hearing more and thinking about what you said, and uh, respond more when we have the next session. And thank you to the uh, uh, the Clarksburg PTA cluster for setting this up. I think this is very very helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, there, Dan. I'm going to now ask. Lorna Phillips Ford, if you could be so kind, um, you now have the floor, ma'am. Oh, thank you very much. And thank you for hosting this event this evening. It gives it's, it's a wonderful um, change in dynamics to, to actually be able to hear before we go out and, and speak um, about what it is we wanna do because at the end of the day, we're here to serve those who are who we are representing. So I love I love the concept of, of hearing from the community first. Um, again, my name is Lorna Phillips Ford. I'm a candidate for District 2 County Council, and I've been an active District 2 Germantown resident for the past 35 years. I spent much of my time in Montgomery County leading advocacy efforts for equitable policies and legislation that actually provide residents from across all walks of life an opportunity to thrive. And that's particularly important in an area as diverse as District 2. I am a community leader in advocating for policy that addresses the social, the economic, and racial injustices, which often tend to lead to health and wellness, housing, policing, business empowerment inequities. I mean, and, and all of these affect everyone, both the vulnerable and the successful. Um, 
it just does. It's not just one pocket that, that's impacted by, by some of the issues that we see in this district. I am also the owner of a small woman and minority, minority owned business. And I persevered during a crippling pandemic. And I understand how critically important it is to nurture and develop a thriving business community. I am the mother of two grown twin daughters who uh, were born and raised in Germantown and are successful products of Montgomery County Public Schools. They actually started at high school in Germantown at um, Montgomery, oh my gosh, what's the name of the school? Uh, they started in, in Gaithersburg, but then they were transferred after their ninth grade um, to Clarksburg. So they were the first Clarksburg graduates of uh, Clarksburg High School. Um, but I have decades of experience in financial planning and, and budget administration. I have an MBA in finance and certifications in contract management and contract law from FIT and Harvard. And I'm someone residents can count on to care about the issues that you care about. And, and, and as your representative, you know, I'll recognize and respond to the economic, social, and other factors that impact the daily lives of, of the residents in District 2 in very different ways. So my platform areas of, of emphasis include economic vitality. We need stable economic growth, and we really need to support small businesses who are the backbone of our economy. Um, I'd be an advocate for Montgomery County to participate in the new Maryland uh, I think they call it Makerspace Initiative Program. This is where um, you collaborate with the nonprofits for the space that they have, the facilities and equipment and mater materials that they have so that people can um, learn and grow uh, in those areas that, that they would like to pursue as entrepreneurs. It, it, it's, um, it allows for access to technical and entrepreneurial skills training and, and so much more for people of all ages and all walks of life because studies show that in Maryland, um, there's a lot of progress still to be had when it comes to career and technical training. Um, environmental sustain sustainability is a critical concern for me. Of course, we have to preserve the Ag Reserve and we need to- Ford, time please. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I think you were in the middle of your, in your, um, in your statement. If you could kindly continue that and then we can go to the next candidate. Okay, I'm sorry, and just take steps to okay. preserve, to expand the diversity of farmers. And quality education and public safety are the other areas of emphasis for me. So I look forward to responding to you at our next opportunity. Yes, thank you so very much. Thank you. I am going now to, I'm going now to, I'm now going to ask William Roberts to, Speak now there, sir, you have the floor. Thank you so very much. Thank you all. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. sorry. Zoom has been defeating me lately with my microphone, so <laughs> and my headphones handy. Um, well, thanks uh, so much. Thanks, Nadia and Minnie uh, and Beth uh, and folks from the Clarksburg PTAs for hosting this event, um, and this important discussion. I'm William Roberts. I'm a candidate for District 2, but more important for tonight, I'm a Clarksburg resident. Um, I'm, I'm your neighbor. Uh, in fact, Minnie, you and I, as you know, <laughs> live around the corner from each other. Um, and uh, you know, I'm really gratified, number one, for you all to host this forum and to share, you know, some of the needs and concerns of our community with folks running all up, running all up and down the ballot. It's really important. Um, I'm someone who has been a fierce advocate for Clarksburg and a fierce advocate for the Up County uh, for over a decade. My family and I live, as I said, here in Clarksburg and Aurora Hills, my wife, Michelle, and my daughter, Mackenzie. Uh, and I'm, run I'm running in this race because uh, communities like Clarksburg really need an advocate, somebody who can fight for us uh, to work on these issues that folks have raised and addressed that have been prevalent and present for the last 20 years and who folks who have been, um, you know, sort of in the mix have not fully addressed. And I think it's time for us to have someone who's going to bring a new energy, but a new perspective um, and a new fight uh, for the issues that we need up here in Clarksburg. Just a little bit about me. I'm uh, uh, a civil rights attorney. I've worked uh, for years in the community as an advocate, both uh, chairing the Up County Citizens Advisory Board, working in various nonprofits. I serve on the board of the Black Rock Center for the Arts. Um, and you know, I, I'm someone who has been really invested in uh, making strides on those things that we, we mentioned, that were mentioned in the testimony for, for our community. I'm running you know, because we really need somebody who's gonna be able to focus on making sure that uh, 
uh, our communities recover from COVID, but also our economy is recovering. Somebody who can focus on the investments in education we need, the sort of pipeline and lifeline uh, of education from uh, sort of pre-K to career, but also somebody who's gonna focus on some of those infrastructure issues that were raised here. I really look forward to the opportunity to address those in more detail in our next forum, but the issues going on in schools in Clarksburg are things that have been known for a long time. And it's both about bringing the right partnerships and people to the table and the right dollars, but it's about having the, the voice and the fight to make sure that our schools stay up in the priority list when we're having the CIP discussion, making sure that Clarksburg tax dollars are reinvested here in the, you know, the additions that we need on Clarksburg High School and the infrastructure challenges we have uh, at WIMS and Clarksburg Elementary instead of down county where we keep seeing um, schools uh, sort of renovated and expanded at our expense. It's about having somebody who understands our transportation challenges because they're living them, right? Who knows the reason that we've got to complete our master plan roads, not just because it's a thing that the county promised us long ago, but because it's holding us back both from the economic development and the quality of life that we need in our communities. And so I've got a plan to do that, to make sure that we're getting, you know, not just Observation Drive completed, but completing Snowden Farm Parkway down to uh, Mid-County Highway in a way that gives capacity for drivers, transit riders, bikers and protected bike lanes, et cetera. And so that's oh. why I'm running to be a community voice who's gonna speak up for our community. I know you're about to cut me off, so I'll, I'll, I will stop, but look forward to folks uh, visiting me at uh, williamjroberts.org and you'll see me out and about in the community because again, I'm your neighbor. Thank you, Thank you. Will. Thank you. Thank you, Minnie. Um, just a reminder, it is three minutes um, for to, to speak to the community and I will chat to you. I will send the time reminders in the chat or Minnie when it's time, she will then you know, um, remind you um, via the Zoom itself. So I'm now gonna go to, thank you so much for Dan Cuda, Marilyn Balcom, Lorna Phillips Ford and, Ken, and William Roberts. These are your candidates for County Council District two. So please, you know, um, be um, go to their sites and see what they have to offer and what their what their positions are and how they can advocate for you. And hopefully, we can connect with them at the actual um, candidate forum where we will engage them further um, with our concerns. I'm now going to go to the Board of Education District One. We have four candidates here: Alexander Fami, Jay Guan, Grace Vera, Grace Vera Oven, Oven, and Esther L. Well, so I'm going to start with Alexander. Um, bear with me one moment. Alexander, if you could be so kind, um, you now have the floor. All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Alex Fami. I am running for Board of Ed at District 1 Montgomery County. I am born and raised in Damascus, Maryland. Uh, went to elementary school, middle school, and high school here. Uh, went on to Towson University. Um, where I went on to work for the Washington Nationals front office and most recently Vanderbilt's athletic department. Uh, I have a sports background. I'm also a uh, keynote speaker at universities um, and athletic departments uh, around the East Coast. Um, I also am a finalist, uh, or I'm, I'm also a uh, judge for um, pitch competitions um, in the venture capital space. I led a marketing campaign that um, and that was led to uh, an opportunity in SEC and was ranked third um, on Forbes uh, and have been very active politically um, volunteering for campaigns, um, which has led me to kind of speak to a lot of parents um, and kids, um, which is what motivated me to run for the Board of Education and uh, fight for our parents and uh, for our children's future. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Alexander. I'm now going to go to, bear with me one moment. Uh, I believe it's Jay Guan. Um, bear with me one moment. I'm just going to remove your spotlight. Going to add his. Jay. Wait, wait. Well, Esther Wells is next, alphabetically. Yeah, last name. Oh. <laughs> 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 So Jay Guan, Jay, you now have the floor, sir. All right. Hi, how's it going, everyone? My name is Jay Guan. Um, thank you, Clarksburg uh, PDSA and the Clarksburg Cluster for hosting this. Um, it's good to see uh, all of you again. So as you know, I'm, um, I'm a neighbor. 
So I think Nadia, you, your kid and I, my, my kid actually go to the same elementary school. So the uh, pedestrian issue that you mentioned, uh, that's daily life for me. So I shared, I, I, I can totally emphasize. And on many of the issues that was raised today, um, whether it was from transportation to school overcrowding or in general, just planning and support for our students. Um, I've, been, I've been advocating on these issues since, since day one. Um, and of course, uh, with the recent extreme overcrowding in Clarksville Elementary, so I worked with the local PDSA to get in touch with BOE to uh, initiate the process on, uh, on the discussion, initiated a discussion on the liberal uh, concept process. Um, I hope that this liberal closer process can serve as a model for the rest of the county or other section of the county who's facing, facing uh, overutilization as well. So I think it's a very useful exercise um, for us to pioneer this, uh, this liberal closer policy and see, um, see where we can go. Perhaps it will become a new tool for, um, for alleviating overutilization. And on other issues such as transportation and, and infrastructure, I think I can speak for all of our neighbors to say that just build a damn thing. <laughs> well, simply just build the damn thing at this point. Um, and so going back to Board of Education. So for, uh, again, I'm running for Board of Education District 1. Uh, some of you may remember I actually ran for at large two years ago. Um, one of the platform that I was running on is Future Ready. And I think through this two years, it has become uh, even more evident that the world around us is changing, changing fast. And the way in which we approach education is not catching up. And we need to take a closer look, a more vigorous look at how, at our curriculum, how our instructions are delivered, the quality of that instruction and teacher and how, how the working conditions for teachers. We have to take a, a take a basically a holistic and a strategic look at all of this and evaluate whether the, the education that our kids are getting at this moment, will it prepare them for the future? So I think that's the overwhelming question that, that we need to answer. And I think the school board has a whole new answer as well. And I think I have 18 seconds. So um, I'll use that 18 seconds to say again, uh, thank you for, for hosting this. Um, we'll see you, uh, I'll see you at the, uh, at the Canada Forum on May 11th. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. I'm going to now ask Grace Rivera Oven to um, speak. I believe you're on your phone. Oh, no, you're here. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, Grace, you now have the floor. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Grace Rivera Oven. I am delighted to be here with you. Thank you so much to the uh, to the Clarksburg uh, Parent Cluster, I am um, just a little bit of myself. I am a product of Montgomery County Public Schools. I grew up in the, not too far from, from Clarksburg in Germantown in the city of Gaithersburg. Um, attended Washington Grove, Gaithersburg Middle and Gaithersburg High School. Uh, decided to make Montgomery County my home. And uh, I have raised my children here. Like some of you, um, we started at Cedar Grove uh, Elementary School, and then we were changed again from the Damascus boundaries to the new Clutsburg boundaries. So then my kids ended up at Gibbs, uh, Rocky Hill, and finally they uh, graduated from Clutsburg High School. My youngest graduated, well, really, he didn't graduate uh, with his class. He got his diploma in 2020. Um, unfortunately, that was the class that was heavily impacted by, um, as all of you know, um, COVID. Uh, some of you probably know me because I'm also the founder of the um, the Up County Hub in uh, Germantown. Um, so, for the past two years, you know, the pandemic has had this devastating impact uh, on our families, our community. We lost over two thousand friends and neighbors and family members in Montgomery County, uh, which is one of the reasons why. Um, and some of you on this call have been incredibly supportive of the Up County Hub, and I want to thank you for that including um, my good friends from uh, Clutsburg High School and others. But one of the reasons that I'm running is because of that, because I have seen um, just the devastation that this um, pandemic has had on our children, on our teachers, on our support staff, um, and the mental health 
um, uh, things that, you know, that we, we talk so much about, but we really need to act on it. Um, the, the education gap, the overcrowding. Um, I'm trying to remember if any of my kids went actually to school. Um, most of my kids were, were taught um, in a portal. They were not, uh, you know, um, I think my youngest really most of the time uh, he was taught in, um, in one of those portals and, and the overcrowding is of course a, a, a huge issue to me. Uh, safety is another issue as well. And of course you probably guess food insecurity for me is also a huge issue when it comes to a lot of our kids in the up county. Uh, you know, it is, it is, it is really, um, not surprising, but very disturbing that the lack of infrastructure of services that we have up county, it seems like we're always forgotten, even though we're the fastest growing area. And, um, and also when it comes to farm schools, yes. Okay, time's up, please. And it's open, by the way. Oh, Thank sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Thank Do you want to finish your last sentence? Oh, no, I'm just very happy to be here running. Um, this is my passion and I have been advocating for the last uh, 30 plus years. So I believe that I'm ready to take on um, the role. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, thank you, Grace. And now I'm going to call on Esther Wells. Bear with me one moment. Ms. Wells, you now have the floor. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much and welcome and thank you for hosting tonight. Uh, again, my name is Esther Wells. And to learn more about me, you would please go to www.anewdawn4, number four, boe.com. Um, a little bit about myself. So similar to other candidates here, my family, we migrated to the United States in 1995. And we settled here in Montgomery County Public Schools. I attended Whetstone Elementary School, Montgomery Village Middle School, Nealsville Middle School, and I graduated with my high school diploma from Watkins Mill High School. I then furthered my education at the University of Maryland College Park to receive my bachelor's in accounting. I'm an active CPA and certified public accountant in the state of Maryland, and I've also received my master's in taxation. I'm a lifelong learner, uh, I'm homegrown, in Montgomery County. And um, I really attribute my success to the education, the world-class education system of Montgomery County Public Schools. Um, when my family moved here, we were in affordable housing. And now today I'm very happy to be part of the middle class and able to pay it forward for families. I understand as a latchkey kid, the sacrifices that parents make uh, to make ends meet and to put food on the table. And so I want to ensure that now that I've been able to elevate myself to the middle class, that I'm able to reach back into my community and be able to harness my story and allow the 160,000 students in Montgomery County Public Schools know that there's a new, um, a new dawn coming, right? And so things will be better. Your future will be brighter. Parent sacrifices are not in vain. And so I truly have a heart um, of empathy for our students that come from poverty, um, the immigrant families, we know what hard work looks like. And so on the Board of Education, what I want to do is ensure that we clear those paths for these children, that if they come to school hungry, we're going to feed them. If they come to school with trauma, we will provide mental health services and counseling, because what we're going to do is set high expectations, and we're going to ensure that these students can show us what they can really do, because we remove these roadblocks from them. And so that's really my goal. And one of the parents uh, testimony where they said, you know, why is the baseline 50%? I do agree with you that we can look at that to say, if we truly set these children up for success, we can have the baseline be 0% because that wouldn't even be in the children's peripheral. They will be able to aim so high that, you know, 70% would be the baseline and not fr from just, you know, being uh, the guarantee, but really it's because of the investment in our children. And so I'm really grateful for this opportunity to be on the Board of Education. I have two boys, one a nine-year-old here that's a learn um, in the Learning Center. He has special needs, autism spectrum disorder, and ADHD. And so I am a huge advocate for our special needs community. Um, also, I believe that if kids are gifted and talented, that we should also be able to offer them uh, ways to accelerate that growth and that learning and really provide wraparound services for our students. And so I thank you for your time, mothers. Uh, mother to mother, I thank you for entrusting us with your children, and I promise to earn your trust and be honest and accountable and accessible to you on the Board of Education. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, Ms. Wells, I'm going to now remove your spotlight here, and I'm going to ask the Board of Education candidates at large to speak. We have two here only. I believe it is Michael Fryer and Dominique Gian Domenico. So I'm going to again go in alphabetical order. Um, Mr. Fryer, if you could be so kind to speak. And I believe you can you start your video so I can spotlight you. If not, that's fine. Can you hear me, Michael Fryer? I can hear you. I was muted and I have to apologize. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't realize I'd be speaking, so. That's all uh, right. Let me just spotlight you for everyone here. Thank you so much, sir. So first of all, as Esther pointed out, the website is www.anewdon4, the number four, boe.com. Esther Wells, um, uh, Don Ina Kahan and I are running as a slate. Don is a social worker. I am a former school teacher and attorney. And Esther, of course, is a CPA and has a finance background. We make a fantastic team together. Um, I have 30 years of experience, first as a school teacher, also as an attorney working with children and uh, families. Um, it's a passion of mine. I could do two hours just on curriculum. So you're gonna to have to flag at me and, and tell me to stop talking. I'm not a lawyer, so I'll just keep rambling on and on and on. <clears throat> um, I am not from Montgomery County originally. I'm actually born in Los Angeles. I spent the past mm, probably 20 years in Hartford, Connecticut, where we placed a, a lot of similar issues. There's actually a lawsuit in Connecticut to break up Hartford, where we had to create uh, about 30 schools in two years. And that's one of the things I find most interesting about Montgomery County. For a, for an area that prides itself so much on diversity, there seems to be such an attitude, there's only one way to do things, and that's it. We talk about kids going to college, but we don't talk about trade schools. Matter of fact, pretty much that's a bad thing to say, and that's outrageous. We talk about building those schools or having new schools, but with the schools that are designed, they have to be in a certain amount of property, the building has to be a certain shape, you have to have a certain, it doesn't make any sense. You know, pointed out in Hartford, we actually managed to do that many schools in short time because we got creative. We got creative with our space. We got creative with our buildings because the reality is this, if we have to wait to bond, pay for and build schools, it's gonna be way too late. Because quite frankly, one of the reasons we're in this problem is because things get built, they get overbuilt. And then by the time you can react and put a school in that area, it's, it's gone. Either the population has shifted or there's, there's, they're aged out or there's other issues. We have to react now. We have to get charters, we have to get magnets, we have to get thematic schools, and we definitely, definitely need trade schools throughout the county to, to really give kids an alternative and parents an alternative to kind of that traditional public education. And the way to do that is to get it into buildings and areas where we can service now, this year, build out, make sure it's safe, make sure it's appropriate, but there is no reason whatsoever that we can't be servicing kids within two years, not 10. The other issue we're facing is that distance learning thing from COVID. Um, wow, I, I can't begin to say, I've actually developed online programs, I've built programs, I've taught programs online, that was a disaster and a half. I understand that we had to react as quickly as we could, but we also then had, since we were the county that was out the longest in the United States, we were the last to return, we had plenty of time to kind of adjust and, and, and figure out what we were doing and we didn't. It was just so horrible. I had to pull my son out for um, homeschooling. And it's fortunate that I do work out of the house. And it's fortunate that I have this amazing background in education that allowed me to turn around and keep him up. He was alone. How many single parents had to make a choice between I keep my job or I send my kids to school? How many parents had to make that choice to leave kids at home alone? So. It's just been a disaster for two years. I have that experience and background and expertise. I want to come in. And I want to fix the problems that we're facing. Thank you there, sir. Thank you. I'm going now to go to Dominique Gian Domenico. Let me remove your spotlight. Thank you there, Mr. Fire. Um, so Dominique, if you could be so kind. You now have the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much. My name is Dominic Jandomenico, and I've spent nearly 20 years working nationally on educational education legislation, federally and in more than 20 states. I've done that on behalf of a bipartisan array of organizations, such as the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, Democrats for Education Reform, Advanced Career Technical Education, and Project Lead the Way. I'm the father of a three-year-old MCPS student with autism, my daughter Phoebe, and my six-month-old Jake. 
I'm the full-time caretaker of both. But a few years ago, I brought together a small group of national leaders to start an organization called the Flyover Project. Our fundraising efforts were unfortunately sidelined by the emergence of COVID, <laughs> excuse me. But we were organized around the simple idea that the civil rights movement needed to be expanded to include rural and small towns and the forgotten parts of America. Only about 4% of MCPS students are rural students. Systemically, it's always been very easy to forget places like Clarksburg, and that's doubly true given the way that our elections are handled in Montgomery County. The way we solve the problem is to approach it the same way we do other civil rights issues, track the issue systemically, collect data purposefully, allocate resources equitably according to need, and to be more engaged within the community itself. Thank you so much for the opportunity to listen to your needs tonight and going forward. Thank you. Thank you there, sir. And so we are now um, towards the end of our event or session here. I think we're pretty good with time. It's like 841. <laughs> Yay. Um, so now I'm just going to share my screen for the last time. This is the action items. And these are the candidate forums. Please you know, note this on your calendars. And um, please be mindful to be able to attend these um, these candidate forums as well. We are working with the executive candidates to determine the best dates for everybody involved. So this is, a this is to be determined. County um, districts, Montgomery County District 2 Council Candidate Forum will be June 1st. Board of Education District 1 and at-large candidate forum will be May 11th. And um, before I fully end this, um, I'm still, I'm going to open the floor again to anyone here for any last minute um, input, um, advice even for our efforts here. Again, this is our first time, so we are very much open to any feedback. Please let us know how can we make this better for you? How can we make sure that we capture everybody's voices and um, especially in the candidate forums? Um, so I have one hand up, it's from Artie. Ms. Artie, you um, now, you're more than welcome to speak up there, ma'am, and you can unmute yourself. Hi, Nadia. Uh, I'm a resident of Clarksburg Village and I'm a PTA member also. Many has seen me at the PTA meetings uh, last few times. Uh, the primary reason I'm here today is because a lot of ca uh, candidates are here that are running for Board of Education. And my struggle in the last two years with Board of Education is that I have written multiple testimonies and they have been shredded down. I just kind of feel they take it in as part of their process and they just don't reply to it, don't respond to it during the, uh, you know, the live meeting that they have the, I forgot the name of what they call, like the time they hear the public meetings, right? So I kind of feel this has got to change. You know, testimonies are not supposed to be shredded down in these uh, public uh, uh, hearings, kids come, teachers come, parents come, and a lot of them are saying the same thing, but the county, the Board of Education is doing something else, you know? And I went to the community event last week and I had the same complaint. And I gave them two very recent examples. One was, after winter break, Montgomery County decided that they don't want, they do not want to do virtual for 10 days, like the neighboring counties and neighboring states were doing it as a safety measure to control the spread. Montgomery decided to do completely the opposite, what others were doing, what the guidelines were saying. So that, and what happened? Every day cases were going up in Montgomery County. And I spoke to one of the persons from board office or superintendent's office and they said, I had thousands of emails come into my uh, mailbox every day. And I said, you could have avoided that if the county decided what the teachers and parents and students wanted. So this is my chief complaint and if the candidates are willing to work on it, you know, I'm ready to support them. I'm ready to walk with them. You know, it just seems this is needed and this is needed now. And that's all I had to say. 
Thank you so very much. I just want to say we're opening this up to our um, community members to speak up. Candidates, if you do want to answer this, we will we will definitely incorporate this as part of the questions. So everything, every testimony that is that was shared or was um, was brought up here will be referenced into the questions for the candidate forum. So I hope you don't mind if we do not call on you to um, provide any additional feedback or response. I'm going to go to Teddy Wu. Teddy, you now have the floor. Thank you. Uh, my name is Teddy Wu. Uh, I am a current PPA president in one of the elementary schools in the cluster. And I've also been the cluster coordinator uh, in the past years. And uh, just want to uh, add to the uh, list of items there, the uh, enrollment in Clarksburg High School and the projections where uh, looking out in 2027, they're gonna be oversubscribed uh, in high school. And I just wanna make sure that uh, the uh, candidates for the Board of uh, Education uh, be able to address things such as, you know, when they uh, expand the high school or re rejigger things around, for example, Crown was going to come online soon. And you're going to, as, as that's going to pull away students from uh, Northwest and, 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 uh, and other high schools, uh, we, we border some of those schools too, too. And my understanding is Clarksburg High School itself with its land and the uh, architecture of the building when they expanded, doesn't really accommodate for much expansion anymore. So I just wanna make sure that they can address these kinds of issues where you know sometimes the uh, infrastructure wasn't built quite right and that maybe moving boundaries is probably the only way to do it uh, instead of um, you know uh, pure construction. Thank you so very much. I thank you so very much, Teddy. Um, I'm go I'm going to allow Jay to speak because he said he just wants to comment on the overcrowding as a neighbor, not yep. as a candidate. <laughs> yeah. So I just wonder. Uh, <laughs> um, so I think one piece of information that we need to keep in mind is that um, the mosque is, is going to go and un undergo a renovation in 2026, at least according to the plan. Now I think if we want to adjust boundaries, that will be the time. If they complete their renovation and expansion and they have room, um, the reasonable thing to do would be to to um to take some some, some more folks over to the Damascus. But I think I, I agree with Eddie. So at, at some point we will need a, a, a foundry study to to resolve the over overutilization of the Damascus. Thank you so very much, sir. I'm now gonna go to Christine Wilson. Thank you, Christine. You now have the floor. Hi, good evening. Um, I want to thank everybody for all of their comments and all my fellow Clarksburg neighbors that I know and don't know. Hi. Uh, I think everybody hit on everything that I've, I've been thinking and wanted to say. I just wanted to add that I'm, I'm a parent and I'm an MCPS teacher. And the impact on COVID disruptions is immense. I mean, I don't think, I think it's going to take decades for us to fully realize um, you know, the impact that, that all these school interruptions have had on our students. And I have a, my, you know, I've been teaching for 15 years and I have a daughter, my oldest is in kindergarten this year at Little Bennett Elementary School. So now I'm on the other side as the parent and PTA member and the overcrowding in Clarksburg schools has a deep impact. For example, me, I want to get involved with the PTA but guess what? I don't know what school my daughter is going to attend um, in a year and a half. And I'm not going to know until November when they vote on the boundary study. And, you know, this, it seems so minimal, but my daughter, you know, she, when everything shut down, she was at one school. When everything reopened, she went to another. And then she started little bit all within, in one year, she was in three schools. And now she's finally settled into a school and has the potential of being moved again. So I just wanted to give a real story as to how overcrowding impacts families and um, that, you know, I, I think it's important that we all work together to continue um, forums such as this to advocate for our, you know, our students, especially the students who are not represented here by families. There's, I mean, there are thousands of students not represented here in the town hall for myriad of reasons, as we know. Um, so thank you again for this time. and. For listening to 
my anecdote. Thank you. Thank you so very much. We really appreciate you coming in and attending and then speaking up. So thank you so much. Um, does anyone else here from our community have any additional input, advice, question, concern? Um, if you do, we I will again continue to open up the floor. Oh, Gilberto Zelaya. Gilberto, you have the floor, sir. Thank you. Hello, my friends. So uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Gilberto Zelaya, or known as Dr. Z. I work for the Board of Elections. So I'm literally walking in from the office. It's kind of election season. So since all the candidates here are uh, basically my clients until uh, November 8th or July 19th, my two issues are number one, the issue, as Mr. Wu said, about the school in Clarksburg. I'm a parent of two children, a Hallie Wells Middle School student and a Clarksburg High School sophomore. With a little bit of engineering and ingenuity, you could expand Clarksburg High School. There's ample amount of land. There's way too many portables because in Whitman High School, they somehow found $125 million to annex a building onto the facility to service 425 students. So with engineering and money, it could be done. That excuse that there's not enough land, I could show you a lot of land behind the schools and there's plenty of portables that are way over overcrowded. That's number one. Number two, as the taxpayers dollar, as the taxpayers for the last three uh, cycles, our representation by our at-large um, current council members, or our council members who will be nameless um, has been subpar. The ability to build thousands and thousands of homes, townhomes and apartments, yet the inability to build a, a community center, a swim center and a viable library. And as I know that there's one in the works, but it's probably the size of Bullsville Library is unacceptable. Community center, swim center and the senior center are long overdue. All of our tax dollars have built beautiful facilities like the Nancy Dasig North Potomac Community Center, the Wheaton Library slash Community Center, and other facilities like the White Oak Community Center Senior Center, which means that our tax dollars are going down county, and I'm already done with that. So by all means, please, for those individuals that survived primaries, in my business, you win the primaries, you're pretty much in for the general. We're going to hold it hands to the fire because this is getting it's long overdue we need the infrastructure we need the schools to be uh annex more room for our students um and we definitely need to be represented especially from the at-large and our specific council members because the last 12 years we need we deserve more representation than photo ops south of rockville that's all i have to say thank you so very much sir dr z I'm gonna call you that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna again, open the floor. I, um, does anyone else, we are hitting over about seven minutes to nine. Hopefully we can finish at nine. Um, we did open it up to be able to finish at 9.30, but you know, the earlier, the better, because we all have abilities, we all have families to get to. So um, we, have a, we have room for about, let's say one or two more of our community members if they wanna speak up. I see your hand, Ms. Wells. Are you speaking from the candidate perspective or as a community? As okay. a community member, if possible. Okay. Thank you, yes. Yeah, um, and so I mentioned that I'm a parent of um, a special needs child. And so one of the concerns that I have, which ultimately propelled me into the races, um, for our special needs kids with the virtual only option, uh, I believe that truly traumatized um, our kids. I witnessed my son crying every day in frustration and, uh, and not understanding why his teacher is now in his Chromebook um, and why he couldn't go see his friends. And so um, some of the things as a parent uh, of this community that I would like to, to hear more about is, you know, what accommodations will be made for our special needs community where, you know, in order to just survive, they need that routine, they need that structure. Um, and then also for any, you know, further upticks in cases, for example, you know, what are your positions on closing schools again, 
right? We have the data now that has come out that says uh, there's a huge learning loss, um, but how much more um, was that to our special needs kids? And so um, that's definitely really important, I think, for us to ensure that even, even in the midst of a pandemic, that all children have a right to an education with uh, reasonable accommodations. And then also, you know, giving parents back the power, I feel very powerless lately, where I don't think that, you know, the staff and the teachers are talking to me, I'm reaching out to the Board of Education, and um, they're not answering me via email. I'm reaching out to the superintendent's office with questions and concerns and not getting back to me. I am not allowed to go past my son's main office at the school, the front door. Um, even yesterday I called and they said still no. And so I've never seen the inside of my son's school um, at the learning center. I don't know what this cafeteria looks like. I don't know what his classroom and his workstation looks like. I'm unable to provide perspective to the teacher to help him be successful. So I really feel like as a parent, um, I'm being ignored and I don't think that's appropriate. And so I'd really like to see more community engagement, more outreach, um, you know, more visibility. One of the prior um, community members mentioned that, you know, I did give testimony for the first time a month ago at the last BOE meeting. And that was exactly what I said. I was like, your handbook says on page 21 that I can only speak to you for two minutes and I can't come back for at least another 30 days. Like, how is that appropriate? It's one thing if I was able to get to you offline and talk to you, and then I come here to just kind of highlight concerns. But if I can't get to you offline and I can't, and it's a one way conversation online, like, how is that effective, right? So, um, as a parent, I do agree with them 100% that there is a, a high level of frustration. Um, and, and we need to put parents back into educating in, in the education process. I want to be able to be the first line of defense for my child to identify if they're suicidal, if they have the depression or anxiety. I want to be the front line to say, I'm their teacher, help empower me and how, how I can help them, right? So I really want to put parents back in the driver's seat when it comes to advocating for our children. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Um, Grace? You are our last one there, so I give you the floor. And this is as a as a, as a neighbor community member, right? <laughs> this is um, so. Um, I don't think uh, you know uh, it's a secret that we had a, an increase in crime. We had another young man killed last week in Germantown. Um, so this Saturday, there is going to be a um, the mom of a young man that was killed in Northwest High School, Mrs. Jones and others are gonna be putting together a rally against violence and they wanna hear from the community. Uh, there will be elected officials there that community members can voice their concerns about. It's gonna take place at Black Rock Center for the Arts. I would encourage, um, especially those of us on this call to, to be present. Um, we have had some very serious cases with ghost guns. We had one of, um, one of the kids who graduated with my son who got killed last summer. And we at the hub were the ones who helped put the funeral arrangements for him when we should have been, you know, when he should have been celebrating his 20, um, his 20 years old. And he died literally a week before his birthday to a very senseless um, violence. Um, so we have a lot to do in, in other areas as well. So hopefully folks on this call um, can also join us on Saturday. Thank you so very much, Grace. Um, Dr. Z, you raised your hand again. Okay, I'll give you the last one. <laughs> yeah, it's really quick. This is nothing, I know we're neighbors, um, but I'm gonna be selfish. Uh, selfish plug to the Montgomery County Board of Elections. We need poll workers, everybody. Without poll workers, those lines are gonna be long. So um, <laughs> if you're available, uh, there is a stipend. You need to be a US citizen registered to vote. You could earn up to $210, and for those high school students, up to 25 SSL credits. We're going to be visiting Clarksburg High School next week. On the third, the second and the third, Principal Owusu sent out some information, some flyers. So please encourage your, your child and their friends to participate. Uh, secondly, as you know, uh, we don't make the rules. We just follow them at the Board of Elections. So Maryland has closed primary, um, which means if you if you happen to be on this call, and you happen to be an unaffiliated and you want to support one of the candidates, you need to make sure you represent that candidate's party. Otherwise, you're gonna be upset, not with us, but with yourself. Um, and then lastly, um, voting by mail. It's, it's, it's safe, secure, easy. For those who are making summer plans, you don't know if you're gonna be around July 19th uh, or between early voting, the 7th and the 14th of July, just vote by mail. We'll mail you your corresponding ballot style. 
uh, apply the sooner the better because if you inundate our staff with 120,000 vote by mail application requests the week before early voting, um, you'll never see me again for the next three weeks helping the team process. So just basic things, update your registration, make sure you request a vote by mail if that's what you desire. Early voting is from the 7th to the 14th of July, election day is July 19th, and we need poll workers. That's it. Thank you. I think we're going to end it with that. Thank you so very much there, Dr. Z. Oh, hold and on. Grace you. needs to post where the event is. She says it starts at 2 p.m. It's on Saturday? Correct. It's on Saturday at Black Rock Center for the Arts. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Minnie. Um, okay, we very, very, very much appreciate um, all of the candidates who were able to come today, even the candidates who were not able to come because we will share the video with them. And all of our community members, the neighbors who were on here, I think we counted about 25 neighbors that came in today. Um, I know it's the time is getting late, so a few of them had to um, had to leave earlier, but we really appreciated. We wanted to do this earlier, like April 6th, but we weren't able to um, gather as much of a of, of, of a draw of, of a um, of a turnout. So uh, we're really glad that we we're able to have as much as we did today. And hopefully we'll have a more significant turnout in the candidate forums. Again, advocacy is hard work. Um, there was a part of me that was like, oh, this is so hard. I don't know if I can do it. I have so many different roles. But like um, a lot of our a lot of um, parents here are my children are the reasons why I, I'm doing it. Um, so Let's do this for our kids. We need to advocate for them, advocate for them. Um, let's continue the conversations. And, um, and hopefully this is not the first, this is not the last time, but this is the first time that Clarksburg's voices are heard and we're gonna continue to be heard. And then we're gonna continue to engage with our elected officials, candidates, and all of the leaders in our communities. Thank you again so very much. I'm gonna end the recording. Sorry. I'm <laughs>